Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for January 4th, 2021. This is the time of week that we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Development of CircuitPython is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so support them by purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern time, but the date occasionally varies for U.S. holidays. Hi, Deshipu. Can you make sure you're muted? Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. I, we think Discord changed. Uh, anyway, uh, the meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern time, but the date occasionally varies for U.S. holidays. We have an online calendar that you can check out. Uh, if you want to speak at the meetings, let us know, and we will add you to the Circuit Pythonistas role. This will also get you a small number of notifications from Discord during the week, mostly notifications about the meeting. The length varies, but it's often from 60 to 90 minutes long. The meeting is recorded and will be posted to YouTube and also released on various podcast services. If you find the podcast isn't available on your favorite podcast service, let us know. The meeting recording includes the text in the CircuitPython channel and the audio from the CircuitPython audio channel. This meeting is accompanied by a notes document. If you'd like to participate but just don't have a mic or prefer not to have your voice recorded for any reason, you can add your update to the notes doc and we'll read them off. If you can't attend at all, you can also leave your notes in advance and likewise we'll read them for you. The document is updated with time codes, so if you want to watch or listen to just a part of the meeting after the fact, you can skip to what you're interested in. This meeting is held in five parts. First, community news with a link to CircuitPython projects, and it's functionally a preview of the Python on Hardware, Hardware newsletter. Second, the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka, a statistics-based approach to summarize the health of the project, and also a high-level summary of recent development and future direction. Third, and the first of two round-robin sections, comes Hug Reports. In Hug Reports, we invite you to highlight the positive contributions from the awesome folks around us. In the round-robin sections, we'll start with the moderator and continue in alphabetical fashion until everyone has had a chance to speak. If you're lurking, we'll skip over you. If you have notes, the moderator will read them aloud. Fourth, status updates. During status updates, we invite community members to take a few minutes to talk about their CircuitPython-related work, progress, and plans. Feel free to chime in with quick tips or advice as appropriate, but for longer discussions, you should take it to our last section called In the Weeds. For topics that are more open-ended, this is where we can discuss them. If you have something you'd like to discuss, please add it to the notes document as soon as you think of it. Tag it with your name so we'll know who's starting the discussion. We'll cover topics in the weeds in the order they were added to the document. Uh, if you'd like to participate in the round robin sections or in the weeds, you do need to be a member of the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord, and you need to add your name and preferably your notes to the uh, to the document in alphabetical order. Um, and just to recap, if you can't attend, uh, prefer not to have your voice recorded, don't have a mic, put your notes in and we'll read them off. And except when you're actively speaking, please keep your mic muted. Looks like Discord may have changed the default so that you enter a voice channel with the mic open. So uh, double check today. And um, yeah, with that, I will take the first time code of the year and we will move on to community news. First, we asked the community, where would you like CircuitPython to go in 2021? And uh, Foamy Guy, I hope you'll be able to get us some links today. Um, as 2021 starts, let's take some time to share our goals for CircuitPython in 2021. Just like past years, we'd like everyone in the community to contribute by posting their thoughts to some public place on the internet. Um, the notes document suggests where you can share those, and please tag it with hash CircuitPython2021 and email CircuitPython2020 <laughs> and email CircuitPython2021 at Adafruit.com so that we can promote it on the Adafruit blog. Next up, Espressive Systems announces the ESP32-S3 microcontrollers. Um, it features a dual-core processor uh, as opposed to the single-core of the S2. The uh, linked 
documents have some more information about SRAM and peripherals and all that good stuff. We've also got new board designs coming soon from Adafruit. Um, in the notes doc, you'll find a picture of some top secret boards that may or may not become future products. So, uh, you know, have a look at them and see if you can guess what they are. Although a lot of them have been covered in um, top secret session uh, videos on uh, YouTube, so you can also check those out. Next, and coming from the community, I will mispronounce this, but it is the Kiko game console, which is based on the Matrix portal. Um, it uh, uses a sound shield with the SN76489 chip on a custom board, and uh, there's a link to retro.moe. Next, we've got a whole section of Star Wars on hardware news with CircuitPython Star Wars Pixel Tree Topper and a refined 3D printed lightsaber with Adafruit Feather and PropMaker Featherwing programmed in CircuitPython. Links go to Twitter. An article called NumPy Illustrated, which is a good resource for Microlab as well, the visual guide to NumPy over at Better Programming and YouTube.com. As always, we invite your contributions to the newsletter because this is a newsletter uh, for the community to promote what you're working on, whether it's a project or even a product. Uh, the newsletter comes out every Tuesday and the complete archives are on adafruit.daily. To contribute your own news or project, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request. You can also tag at an engineer on Twitter or email nb at adafruit.com with your tips. There will be a lot more in the newsletter, so I invite you all to subscribe. Uh, but now we will step over to the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. As I said before, we uh, like to take a numbers approach to some things not everything, uh, but to get an idea of the health of the project. And uh, so overall, we have two weeks of um, activity since the last time we met. And um, in the last week, we had 18 pull requests merged from 20 different authors and 10 reviewers. And we closed 24 issues by 11 people and 21 people opened 23 issues. Uh, in the week before that, we had uh, 17 other pull request authors and nine other reviewers. So I want to thank all those folks. There are also a bunch of names here that are less familiar to me. So apologies if I mangle any of them, but uh, we're happy to see contributions from Ben Etherington, TMF97, Burzap, uh, Unid, B.W. Shockley, Alex Whitmore, Biffo Bear. These are just the names that... Uh, aren't super familiar to me. Um, Hugo Dahl, I think, is a newer contributor. Um, Betsy, James Russo, Slutsky, M. Shannon 78660, DCD, KT Dryer, 210PVP, J0 Lee, TWA 127. Uh, and of course, thank you to uh, our many reviewers. Reviewers are one of the important things in enabling us to uh, take this number of pull requests. If you uh, would like to become a reviewer, please uh, please do. You can start by just commenting on pull requests saying, I looked at the code, I tested this, I have a suggestion, and uh, then let us know if you want to officially become a um, pull request reviewer, which will uh, give you extra superpowers on GitHub. Um, moving on, to the core. The core is the C code that makes CircuitPython work, and um, it's written in C. And uh, last week we had seven pull requests merged from 10 authors and four reviewers. We have 15 open pull requests with uh, the oldest one edging up towards a half a year. So as usual, we need to take a look at those and either commit to merging them or close them up if it's just not going to work out. We uh, had five closed issues by two people and eight open by seven people. So our issues number went up a little bit, bringing us to 360 open issues. We mostly track our priority using milestones. And uh, at the time this report was run, we had two open issues for 60x and one open issue for 610. So we are really just a stone's throw away 
from uh, releasing a release candidate for version 6.1, which uh, is pretty exciting. So with that, I will turn it over to Katni to tell us about the libraries. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that begins with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few other uh, tidbits we have included, um, especially the uh, CircuitPython community bundle. Um, we had nine pull requests merged by nine authors. A few of those names that uh, Jeff called out earlier are in there. So thank you very much to our new contributors and thank you to our continued contributors and six reviewers. Um, and let's see, that leaves us with 42 open pull requests, um, the newest of which is two days old. Um, we had 17 closed issues by 10 people and 13 open by 13 people. So we're down to 263 open issues. Eight of those are listed as good first issues. Um, if you're interested in any of this information or you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython, um, consider going to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information, um, a list of open PRs, a list of open issues, and um, a list of library infrastructure issues. If you're new to uh, contributing to CircuitPython or you're new to coding in general, good first issues are a great place to start. Usually those are something like a documentation uh, update or something to that effect um, that anybody can do. And if you're new to Git and GitHub, don't let that um, intimidate you. We have a guide and we are always available to answer questions both on GitHub and Discord. Um, so in terms of new libraries, we had two new libraries uh, in the last two weeks, DLTR 390 and SGP 40. And we had um, two new libraries in the community bundle. Um, the AT42QT1070 Acorn Touch Sensor and uh, CircuitPython Display Frame. And we had a number of updated libraries, the list of which I will not read off. Those are always available on circuitpython.org slash libraries. If you're interested in seeing that update information, you can scroll down to the bottom and it's available there. Um, we're seeing an increase of activity on this community bundle, which is amazing to see. Um, it's always good to have um, CircuitPython support for things that Adafruit doesn't necessarily make or uh, directly support um, are what end up in the community bundle. And um, it's been fantastic to see folks contributing their um, both their own personal hardware or helper libraries or stuff they wrote that they think would be useful for other folks. Um, making that available is great. It's what open source is all about. Um, and we're seeing new libraries coming every week as we bring up new hardware. And as was mentioned earlier, see the newsletter for hardware leaks. Um, that's the kind of stuff that uh, brings up more circuit Python libraries. Um, and thank you to uh, Fidacious, who writes a lot of our circuit Python libraries um, for new breakout boards. And that's where we are with the library. All right. And next, I will hand uh, the mic to maker Melissa to tell us about Blinka. Hello. Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers, including uh, some MicroPython boards. And um, this week, we had to two pull requests merged by two authors and two reviewers, uh, the authors are uh, Dan Helber and uh, Alex, Alex Whitmore. Uh, and the two reviewers are also Dan Helber and uh, Mark Gambler. Uh, there were four, op there are four open pull requests at this point. And there were two closed issues by two people and two open by two people, leaving a net of 48 open issues. There were 4,260 PyPI downloads in the last week, and there are currently 60 boards supported. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you. And with that, we will move on to Hug Reports. As I said earlier, Hug Reports is the time to spotlight the great stuff that's being done by the people in the community around us. Um, this is around Robin, so I'll start with myself and then go down the list alphabetically. If you're uh, marked as lurking or text only, etc., I will read your notes. 
Otherwise, um, when I get to you, please open up your mic and uh, let us know what's on your mind. So uh, first, I'd like to lead with a group hug and a welcome to 2021. A hug to Katni for being a good listener this week when we had a private chat. And uh, to Zoltan V923Z for Microlab. When I was thinking back on 2020, this was one of the big and anticipated, at least by me, additions to CircuitPython. And finally, uh, um, to Skur and Sphere in a Box, a hug report for being helpful in the 3D printing channel. Uh, something I love, but something where uh, my expertise level isn't what it could be. And with that, I will hand it to Jerry, and after that, we'll go to Katni. Hello, and happy new year. Thanks. Um, yeah, just a, a hook report to uh, ask Patrick W. and Donda Yonderboy in Discord for uh, a lot of help over the weekend and several last last week on uh, issues with the using Deep Sleep on the Feather S2 and AIO. We've all been exchanging, commiserating. It's been fun. All right. Um, on deck, uh, I have some notes, but first I'll pass it to Katni. Thank you. So first up, um, I want to give a hug report to ask Patrick W. and Anik Data for requesting more info on their new reviewing role and for diving into their new role. Um, I realized typically we bring people in as reviewers after they've already done some reviewing, but you can't actually do the reviewing process until you are an official reviewer. And uh, we promoted both of them to uh, joining the CircuitPython librarians team and being able to review all the CircuitPython stuff. Um, but we didn't actually give them a primer on reviewing. And so that was uh, a learning moment for myself um, in the sense that that's something we definitely need to do moving forward for anybody that we bring into reviewing is a quick primer. It was six sentences, um, but both of them re reached out to me separately saying, hey, what am I supposed to be doing here? And that was entirely fair. It's something we should have done immediately um, and uh, will do moving forward. Um, so that was uh, good for a lot of reasons. And um, a group hug and happy new year to everyone. Here's hoping things get better. That's what I've got. All right, thank you. Uh, so stand by Melissa. First, I have a note from Kevin Thomas who sends group hugs and uh, a wish for a happy new year for everyone. Uh, after Melissa, I have some more notes to read. I just had a group hug and happy new year. Thank you. Uh, so from Mark Gamblor, who is lurking, he has a hug report to me for giving some hints on duct typing for bus device and a group hug and a happy new year to everyone. Uh, next, I have notes from Microdev, who writes group hug and a happy new year. I'm really sensing a theme here. Uh, Mr. Certainly is text only and says, thanks to everyone for their kindness and willingness to make this place better, whether it be development, moderation, or behind the scenes work. A much deserved group hug and happy new year to all. Uh, then next I have notes from Tanute, and it will be up to the top of the list with more notes for me to read. So, uh, let's see. Scott, who is out on vacation and back tomorrow, writes, Group hug, Happy New Year, everyone, and a hug report to me for being the first to post for CircuitPython 2021. Probably not the most insightful post, but uh, I'll accept being first. And now um, I've got a couple more people's notes to read. The next person we'll hear from besides me is Dan. Uh, but now Anik Data, who is lurking, has a laundry list. Hug reports to Ask Patrick W., Mark Gamblor, Benny Eid, Dan H., Microdev, Jepler, Jerry N., Tanut, and I'm sure others for all of their help and patience on Discord, helping to get me from blank slate to ESP32 S2 CircuitPython build. That's awesome. Um, we're happy to get people there and I wish uh, it was a little less bumpy. It's, I think, the most complicated build setup that we have. Uh, anyway, next are notes from C. Grover, who is just listening in and says, Happy New Year, a toast of hope to all. Um, after Dan, I will read notes from David. Hi, Dan. 
Hi. So thank you, Jeff, for doing the 610 Beta 3 release. I think that might be the first release that you did. I'm not sure. It's doing a release is a complicated process with lots of steps that you can forget. So thank you for taking the time to do that. I did do some, I think, around 5.3. Okay. So it wasn't totally new. You would have gotten more questions if it was. All right. <laughs> we, did, we decided, I think we need a checklist. Yes. So, uh, and then thanks to MicroDev, who uh, implemented touch alarms on the ESP32 S2. I, I think there are some questions about, there might be some fix-ups for that, but it's in good shape for now, and we really appreciate that. And then thanks to several people who helped. There are, we are seeing some very peculiar Mac OS issues um, where sometimes after time dot, either time dot sleep doesn't work at all or in the REPL, it doesn't come back. The greater, greater, greater prompt is not printed. This seems to be maybe some kind of USB problem and I'm still trying to track this down, but these people were all very helpful in trying to narrow the problem. I cannot duplicate some of these problems myself because I don't have the right version of a, of, a, of a MacBook. And I'll talk about that later in status updates. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Uh, after I read David's notes, um, we will go to Foamy Guy. So uh, David writes, a hug report to Maker Melissa for porting Matrix Portal to use Portal Base. A hug report to Kevin J. Walters for uh, the review of the PM 2.5 UART pull request. A hug report to Dylan for the MagTag project selector. A hug report to Ricardo Quesada from Retro.moe for the BluePad 32, the SN76489 Retro Sound Module, and the Kiko Portable Game Console, which we mentioned during community news. And finally, a hug report to MicroDev1 for the touch alarm on ESP32S2. So I'll hand it next to Foamy Guy and then let Hire Effect round out the section. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, hug report this week uh, to Jerry N. Uh, always offering great help in Discord uh, and the help with channel and really everywhere across Discord to see Jerry helping uh, myself and other people out. So thank you uh, for that. Um, uh, similarly to Scott, uh, just specifically kind of for going back through the history, I know uh, he's got some time off now and he's usually gone on the weekends and stuff. Uh, but he um, is always really good about going through the history and answering things that um, got posted while he was gone that he knows the answers to. And so I really appreciate him taking the time uh, to do that. Um, and then lastly, just a, a group hug to everyone. And of course, uh, a happy new year uh, along with everyone else. Thanks. All right. Go ahead, Hire Effect. Yeah, just a happy new year to everyone to round out the group. All right. That concludes Hug Reports and brings us to status updates. In status updates, we invite you to let us know what's been up, uh, in this case, in the past two or so weeks of your work with CircuitPython, what you hope to get up to um, in the coming week, and just uh, anything else that you want to update us about, a fun project that doesn't involve CircuitPython, um, whatever. Uh, some people have told us about remodeling their bathrooms, so... You know, this is free form. Go wild, but not too wild. Uh, I'll start us off by letting you know that in the last weeks, I didn't spend a whole lot of time working uh, between some stuff going on with my close family and the holidays, but I did create a web-based converter for uh, PCF fonts. It's hosted on GitHub pages and it works client-side on the in the web browser, which is kind of neat. Uh, so there's a link there in the notes document, but actually that's been moved under the Adafruit um, organization, so I'm not sure whether the links work. I'll post up the correct ones after the meeting. Uh, so if you uh, are doing projects with fonts in them and you would like to have a font file that's a little bit smaller and loads a lot quicker, check out this converter. Make sure you have the latest version of the um, Adafruit bitmap font library in your lib folder. And uh, yeah, I, I value your feedback. We, uh, I think there's at least one or two bugs uh, to be worked out, but anything that you can tell me about that will be helpful. And um, let's see. I also released uh, 610 Beta 3, thanks to all the contributors. It was an amazing list and there's a ton of stuff in there. Um, also check out that release, run your projects on it and let us know of problems. 
because we can't test everything. Uh, we need to hear from the community about where the problem points are. Uh, anyway, this week um, I have some font stuff to finish up. I have a particular font file that when it's converted to PCF, uh, Adafruit bitmap font can't read it successfully, and I need to figure out why that is. Um, moving beyond that, um, I still have work on the I2S audio output for the ESP32-S2, uh, but in the internal meeting we set the, the priority of those to wrap up. The PCF fonts uh, first, do the I2S second, and uh, to postpone the anti-alias anti-aliased font, uh, probably until Display.io has true alpha composting. So uh, alpha compositing, composting is different. Um, so that'll uh, move off into the indefinite future. Uh, and with that, I will pass it on to Jerry and then Katni. Thanks, Jeff. Um, let's see. So last couple of weeks, um, got some updates into the RFM9X library. Uh, there was an a change or a redefinition of how RSSI would, was to be calculated. That was an easy fix. And uh, and then there have been a bunch of errata that were reported by uh, Matt Holliday that were nice to get in there. He had, he had actually done all the work of identifying them, so it was really easy to implement them. So it's nice to have that stuff in. And um, and then one of the a good example of why it's kind of fun to just hang out in Discord, um, a user had a question about using a cutie pie, and they were Disappointed that they're trying to use audio bus IO, which is which is not built into the cutie pie build. And so, you know, we were looking at it and then trying to decide, you know, if there was a simple way to make it work because he wanted to use an I2S amplifier. And so just on a whim, sort of went and said, okay, well, we gotta take something out. So we took vector IO out, which he wasn't using, and um, put audio bus IO in and it fit. So and that solved the problem. They were able to do their stuff. And it turns out I had the same hardware here, the little amplifier. It was kind of fun to play with it and uh, actually made me think about a bunch of different things to do do with that. So um, nice to be able to play with it and then hopefully show this user how they can now go ahead and build their own custom versions of uh, CircuitPython to, to move ahead with their projects. Uh, was that a CutiePie Hackspress, by the way? What's that? Was that a CutiePie Hackspress, by the way? It was a Hackspress, Okay. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I forgot they are different. And uh, then I spent the rest of a lot of time playing with Deep Sleep on the ESP32 S2, and um, and kind of struggling at first because it, what I was trying to do is I have a you know uh, a temperature humidity uh, sensor, one of many, and uh, have it sending data to AIO, and I've been doing that for a long time. But then I figured, well, it'd be nice to see if I can extend the battery length of of a, of a project and use the Deep Sleep. And I always kept having the projects just, just wouldn't they would crash all the time. They wouldn't they wouldn't keep running. And um, a lot of it, you know, I didn't know if it was to do a deep sleep or or what. And it's a little tricky to debug deep sleep because it's not usually connected. But um, it turns out that a lot of the problems or most of the problems I was having were network connection issues that I just wasn't catching in the in the code. So the code was crashing. Um, and um, when I switched over to using a Metro S2 to do it, it it turned out to be a lot easier to understand what was going on because the Metro S2 has the status LEDs, uh, the Neo Pixel, where the Feather S2 does not. So it was it became a lot more clear what was happening when when I could see the status LED blinking. So um, yeah, uh, I'll get actually get to that in, in next week's work. But then one thing I did run into, and I don't know if anyone else has seen this, and it's happened. Well, I've only caught it once, and that was on an unexpected maker Feather S2, when it woke up from deep sleep, it went to safe mode. And I've only seen that once while I had it in the, on the uh, hooked up to USB so I could see what was going on. But I have had that board stop a few times still. Um, and uh, whereas the Metro S2 seems to be cranking along pretty reliably. So I'm just, just trying to learn more about that. And one of the things that now what I've been working on is let, yesterday and today is trying to get the status LED up and running on the Feather S2. Um, I think I have it working. I'm about ready to put a PR in for it. But um, that will be a big help because when it crashes, for some reason, at least you then have the status LED telling you that it did. Um, and it's a lot easier to keep track of what's what's been going on. Um, 
Oh, and then the other thing that my next goal on that is to take an RFM 9X and hook it up on a ESP32 S2 board to see if I can use the deep sleep and, and uh, sort of get to a lower power version of, of all that stuff. So that's a long winded, long winded two weeks, but lots of fun. All right. Thanks. Uh, after Katni, I have some notes to read, but uh, go ahead. Thanks, Jeff. So in the last two weeks, um, one of the more important things I did was set up membership screening on Discord. Um, folks now see a uh, window that has a distilled version of our code of conduct, and they have to agree to follow those rules before they can uh, join up with our Discord. So if for any reason um, you have folks mentioning that, I just wanted to point out that that was implemented. Um, obviously, everybody who's here is already on Discord, um, but if you're listening to this after the fact and you're going to join our Discord, uh, be aware that that is um, something that is there now. Um, I helped write the guide for the LTR390. I uh, wrote up the guide for the MPO121 Gator Breakout. It's a touch, uh, I squared C touch sensor uh, breakout, um, but there's now a version of it that has um, alligator clip pads just like the ones on the um, Circuit Playground Express, for example, um, to make it easier to uh, just clip it on. And it's um, only a stem board. There's no headers available on it. So it's excellent uh, for folks looking to get started. Um, it doesn't require any soldering. So that's, that's an excellent little board there. And mostly updated the CCS 811 guide with the stem QT revision of the board. The overview is not completed. Um, I'm waiting on the board to go live in the shop, and then I can get the rest of the images from there, but the rest of the guide is updated to have info on the STEM QT version, which, again, is not yet available, but if you want some sneak peeks, check out that guide. This week, um, today I got my CircuitPython build environment updated, won the battle with GCC on Mac OS, um, so that's done, um, and that was to test a Circuit Playground pull request because uh, since the Circuit Playground library is frozen in on Circuit Playground Express, the only way to test it is to um, build Circuit Python with the new frozen, uh, with the new library frozen in. Um, so I did that. Uh, next step is to actually test it. I'm going to be reorganizing the asset folders on the Python on Harbor newsletter to wrap up 2020. Um, I, uh, my, my git foo is a little bit better than and um, so she asked me to do that since it takes her ages to do. Um, doesn't take me any time at all. I uh, started going through guide feedback, found a lot of folks frustrated in the QDPy guide because the first page of the Welcome to Circuit Python guide, which is uh, creating and editing code, um, uses a blink example with the D13 LED, and there is no little red LED on QDPy. So we added a warning saying it doesn't work. Um, folks were really frustrated by that because they then could not follow along with the rest of the page to learn how to create and edit code in CircuitPython. And it seemed like these were new folks that were new to CircuitPython overall. Um, so this is an important thing to fix. So I wrote up a quick Blink example using the onboard NeoPixel um, and linked to it. I didn't embed it in the guide because I don't want to confuse everybody who has every other board. Um, but hopefully that alleviates the frustration so folks can download that and then follow along because the only changes that we make to the code on the page are to um, the timing of the blank. So it doesn't matter what LED it's using, you can follow along on that page. Um, some point this week or next week, I need to finish the CCS 811 guide uh, once that goes live. I want to do my CircuitPython 2021 post and then um, following uh, testing the circuit playground probably pressed, I'm going to be doing a library PR issue sweep, um, which is good to get done every so often and um, see what I can uh, do or poke or, um, you know, get moving on any kind of um, PR or issue uh, that are um, on any of the Adafruit circuit Python libraries. Uh, in terms of my own projects, I started looking at beginning the code to port my tabletop Lightbox Photo Studio from Python and Raspberry Pi to CircuitPython. 
The CircuitPython version can't be based on the keyboard controlled Python version because I'm including a mini PFP Featherwing and Bluetooth support in the CircuitPython version. As long as compensation for um, and separate control of the warm and cool LEDs, the original version only had cool LEDs, I believe. Um, so uh, the CircuitPython version is far more complicated, um, is my point. So it's not it's not easy to just take um, the uh, current version off of the Raspberry Pi and make it work in CircuitPython. Um, so I started looking into that. The hardware is already picked and soldered and so on and so forth like that. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out how I'm going to do this complicated code. But got a chance to take a look at that this weekend. Hopefully, over the next couple months, I'll get some time to actually spend on that. And that's what I have. Okie doke. Um, I will read some notes. Whoops, didn't mean to press that key. Sorry about that. Uh, read some notes from Kevin Thomas, and then we will go to Maker Melissa. Uh, Kevin writes uh, that they've been focused on teaching a number of different courses, such as Ansible for Everyone, MicroPython for Microbit, and Reverse Engineering for Everyone. So hopefully very soon we'll start making some more CircuitPython projects. Uh, next is Maker Melissa, and then after that I have a large number of notes to read. Hi. Uh, in the last two weeks, uh, I went ahead and I refactored Matrix Portal to use Portal Base. I worked on refactoring Pi Portal to use it. I uh, got pretty close on that, but not, didn't quite get that done. And I also worked on some new pixel issues on Raspberry Pi. And then I took most of that time off. And this week, I'm going to work on catching up on issues and PRs from while I was gone. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, I have a number of people's notes to read. It looks like uh, next up after those is Dan. Uh, so Mark writes, uh, hope to get a PR for the fixed Adafruit bus device in the core out this week. May need help to test it to avoid any of the previous issues that were caught. Uh, Mr. Certainly writes, uh, picked up an analog and digital discovery, learning the tools for future projects. I would love to hear your mini review of that device because it looks pretty cool. Uh, during a snowstorm power outage, we did small engine repairs on two generators. One had a bad float, which couldn't be fixed immediately. The other had a blocked fuel line. Always fun putting troubleshooting skills to work outside at 4 a.m. while sleeting. And finally, fixed a drain pipe leak, which created a small waterfall in our basement. Good news! I have some water-damaged NES and SNES systems and carts to practice electronics repair, uh, or to make vintage system cases for other projects. I guess that that's if things go wrong. And now I just have to read what uh, Mr. Certainly said in the text channel for those who are audio only. He said, font composting helps break down unwanted ligatures. <sighs> I wanted to groan, but I tried my best not to. Uh, all right, uh, next we have notes from Scott, who writes uh, CircuitPython 2021 blogging, streaming a deep dive on Friday, catching up on emails and pull requests, and other odds and ends. Back up at the top of the list. Yes, uh, Dan is up next, and then after that I have notes from David. Okay, since this, uh, since it's been a while, uh, a while ago, I released CircuitPython 601. Uh, that fixed a couple of really necessary bugs. There were some BLE regressions, frequency in stopped working. And also we decided to add the JSON speed up that Scott wrote, which really speeds up JSON parsing incredibly. It's made very helpful for um, certain internet based uh, programs. Uh, I'm mostly now just doing bug fixing on for the eventual 6.0 release, and that will continue this week. I have some other things to fix, like PWM out seems to be broken on at least some boards. The next thing after that I'll probably look at is that uh, for a while now we wanted to have a second uh, USB serial channel. Right now we have a single serial connection, which also talks to the REPL and obeys control C and that kind of thing. But we, people often want to write um, programs that just send data back and forth to the host computer and not have it 
not have to worry about tripping over things in the UR, in the um, REPL. So uh, we'll look at that. It may be necessary uh, to turn off other features optionally uh, because we run out of what are called USB endpoints, which is the number of devices you can have, basically. And so uh, that, but I'll be looking at that as soon as I can finish some of the 6.0 release stuff, or maybe even before then if I get bored. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to say about the sleep issues, or did you pretty much cover that? Oh, the sleep issues. Uh, I forgot to write. <laughs> I said, I guess. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, this is a plea. If anybody has a, um, a MacBook Pro that is 2018 or maybe later, uh, take a look at the um, issue that I just posted in the CircuitPython channel, which has a simple Blink program. And I'd like you, if you could try it on your 2018 MacBook Pro, that would be great because we're trying to figure out if this is a problem with the MacBook hardware after a certain time. I have a 2017 MacBook and it doesn't, I can't reproduce this error. If you have 2019 or 2020, try it too, but we have a report of it breaking on 2018. And you can put some comments in that issue. That would be great. Thank you. I can give that a shot, Dan, if you'd like. I, I, I was hoping to get a chance to try out some of that low power code, and I do have a 2018 MacBook Pro. So Terrific. That would be great. And this is really simple. It's just a Blink program. So it's either going to work or not. I mean, you have to try it a few times, but that would be great. Thank you very much. OK. OK, I'm, now I'm done. Yeah. OK. Um, Foamy Guy is up next, but now I have notes from David, who is lurking. Uh, with respect to the EnviroPlus Featherwing, adding Feather S2 support in uh, Pimerani slash physical feather pins, and comparing temperature from an onboard BME280 to the Stemma PCT2075. Uh, next, the BluePad32, which is an airlift replacement firmware to communicate with Bluetooth joysticks. Um, install on Matrix Portal M4. Tried the draw and two player snake with Wiimotes and install on a Pi Portal and try to find a project that could use a joystick. On the Pi Portal, switching I2C from 5V to 3V to use the Stemma connector and a link to Twitter, an in out temperature sensor that's in the notes document. Thank you, Katni. And non circuit Python stuff blink and listen to a button of a buzz controller on the Raspberry Pi. I am interested in a CircuitPython way to do that, but it requires USB host. Uh, let's see. So up next is Foamy Guy, and then wrapping it up is Hire Effect. All right. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, um, I got sucked in a little bit to uh, playing Stardew Valley again, um, and naturally started trying to think of ways to tr to bring circuit python devices uh into that and figure out different ways to use them with that um and so right now the thing i have my eye on um in in that game there's lots of npcs and they all have uh birthdays and you can kind of go and give them a, a birthday gift and you get um credits basically you get uh points um so i want to make a kind of a calendar that will tell me uh whose birthday it is on which day and you can kind of advance the days and it'll always tell you uh, what's coming up uh, but I might look into some other ways to make a fancy uh, macro pad or controller or something like that that goes along with Stardew. Um, a couple of other things I was doing is uh, I spent a lot of time looking into to tile map uh, game assets. Um, so I, I bought a new set of uh, assets. I think it's called like Kenny's Game Assets. They release one every now and then. So maybe 10 or 20 bucks or something. You get a, a zip full of all kinds of different game stuff. So. Uh, it's fun to look through there and see what you can make with um, some of the stuff. And it's all licensed very permissively. So I'm a supporter of, of them and their open licensing of, of artwork. So I was going through there. I was kind of brainstorming uh, different games I could put together. Um, thinking about uh, kind of a trash pickup game. You walk around a city, you have to pick up trash and put it in a, in a trash can. And maybe you move on to a, a nicer city or, or something. I don't know exactly how it will work. But that's one of the ones I was kicking around ideas for. Uh, one of the other things that came out of that was um, one of the, the assets that they had in that bundle I bought was uh, some some grayscale kind of patterns, uh, black and white uh, and gray patterns. Um, and I got them, I had to do some processing on them to, to change the size and then 
uh, break them apart into different uh, images, break them out of the SVG, and then get them back into to PNGs, and then uh, put them all back together in a sprite sheet, and then get it converted over to, to bitmap. So I spent a fair amount of time setting up the, the tool chain to get all of that uh, going so I could resize those things. But in the end, it, it came out really nice. I made this nice little uh, patchwork pattern generator. There's some uh, pictures of it over in the in the show and tell room on Discord if anybody's interested. But it kind of just draws some random, uh, nice looking patterns on the screen. And I spent uh, far too much time just uh, staring at that and hitting reset to see the next one. Um, the other thing I did uh, over the time off was I was looking into a kind of a strange issue. I, I still don't really know the, the root cause of it, but it's around uh, groups, uh, display IO groups getting scaled an extra time. So like you tell it, you know, scale two, but then on the screen you end up with uh, actually having scale four. Um, and I first noticed this with the display text label. Um, and I haven't really seen it happen outside of that. And I can't figure out what it is about the label um, that's making it do that. It doesn't do that on, on the microcontrollers. Um, and I, I've tried replicating it without display text, but have thus far been unsuccessful in, uh, in figuring out exactly what is causing that. Uh, so I'll poke around with that some more. Uh, some other things I want to do this week coming up, um, I'm going to finish up porting the IoT trivia app to Pi Portal. I got started on that over the break, uh, but need to finish it off. I would like to uh, update the bitmap label to support um, the senders and descenders uh, properties. I think that's the right thing. It's basically the same thing, Jeff, that you did in the, in the label uh, in display text. I want to get bitmap label updated for that. Um, I want to work on the the frame widget. I um, was gonna. I, th this is actually how I came to find this weird scaling issue. Is I sat down to do this, and I was uh, gonna do it on my on my PC with uh, Blinka Display. Oh, and I noticed that the, the font gets all weird. But I want to ask, uh, or excuse me, I want to add some options for like where you can put the label. So by default, uh, the label in the frame it goes in the top and centered. Uh, and I want to have it to where the user can choose like left or right, um, and it will kind of anchor itself. Um, to the edge of that rounded rectangle frame there. Um, so that's something I'm going to do this week. And then uh, last uh, last thing on my list is to write out my uh, my 2021 um, Circuit Python post. Uh, so I'll be doing that this week. Thanks. Thank you. Um, that patch of mine to use the ascent and descent has sort of languished. Um, I wonder whether um, both of those classes, the label and the bitmap label, could they inherit a common base class that would have the ascender stuff, or maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense? But if you're if you're looking at it, keep that in mind as a as a possibility. Yeah. But also that would mean I would need to finally finish up my pull request, so I should get that will, back on uh, my list. That's a good point. I will uh, I will take a look at it with an eye towards that. I hadn't hadn't considered that. That's a good point. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, and it could just be functions rather than classes, but yeah. Take a look and see if you can make it better. Uh, anyway, Hierofact will wrap up status updates. Go ahead. Um, this past week, or two weeks, really, um, I worked, uh, took mostly time off for the holidays. Um, but I did work on a, a guide that I'm doing to add uh, language flashcards uh, to the mag tag um, and uh, built a couple example programs for that, one of them simple and one of them a little bit more complicated. Um, uh, outside of the guide, which is sort of just very simple flashcard programs, I also worked on a kind of a big overarching uh, flashcard project that has been my own personal thing, um, which, uh, you know, has a bunch of different kind of uh, spaced repetition software and other tools for learning languages. And I'm hoping to maybe create a device, a kind of a dedicated CircuitPython flashcard device this coming year. Um, that will uh, host some of that on CircuitPython as opposed to uh, the, your host PC. Um, this week, I'm going to be returning to uh, Socket, the Socket layer uh, in a, a CircuitPython on the ESP32 S2. Uh, have a couple of blocking problems, basically all having to do with uh, throwing errors and when to time out and all that kind of stuff. Um, the uh, the CPython Socket uh, implementation is a little bit roundabout in terms of how it handles errors. So I'll be revisiting that. And uh, and then I'll be starting on some uh, kind of older items on my uh, to-do list, including an ice cord C transfer bug and uh, getting back into the IMX uh, weeds. So that's going to be my project for this week. And that's it for me. Sounds like you'll keep busy. 
All right, that finishes up status updates and brings us to in the weeds. Uh, any long form discussion, this is the place for it. Uh, we've got two topics, although I think, Dan, that we already covered your uh, request for help with that bug. So if you don't mind, I will pass it to Katni. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I just wanted to mention the CircuitPython 2021 call again. We mentioned it in uh, community news, uh, but I wanted to highlight it specifically. We are looking for your goals for CircuitPython in 2021. Um, if you search for CircuitPython 2020 on the Adafruit blog, you will find all of last year's posts if you uh, need some kind of inspiration or you're not quite sure what it is we're talking about. Um, it's sometimes better to just see examples. We basically want to know what you want to see out of CircuitPython in 2021, and this can be related to the CircuitPython core, it can be related to the CircuitPython libraries, it can be related to the community. Um, it basically, you know, everything that makes up CircuitPython um, is, is, you know, we want to know what you um, want to see out of it. So Scott already wrote up uh, the call um, on the Adafruit blog, and um, Jeff has apparently written up his post already. Uh, and when you write up a post, um, put it somewhere public on the internet, uh, doesn't matter where. Um, if you don't have a blog or any kind of thing like that, you can make a gist on GitHub and link that. Um, please email, I believe it's circuitpython2021 at adafruit.com with a link to your post so we can um, promote it on the Adafruit blog. And also we want to, in the end, aggregate everything. Um, thank you very much for posting that. Um, check out that post that was just linked in the CircuitPython chat, and that will give you an idea um, of what it is we are looking for. And it looks like from the preview that both 2019 and 2020 are both linked in that post as well. So you can look at the previous posts for inspiration to get some ideas um, of what it is we're looking for. And we really want to know what you want out of things. Um, these posts have in the past guided how we've chosen to move forward with CircuitPython and how we've chosen to prioritize uh, features, um, you know, based on, you know, what folks come up with. And sometimes folks come up with very new things that we never even considered. And we uh, are interested in that as well. So I just wanted to put that out there as a standalone thing. Um, please uh, let us know what it is you want to see out of CircuitPython in 2021. Um, so we have, uh, something to base our plans on. That's what I got. Yeah. I want to just add to that. Um, you know, don't be intimidated or talk yourself out of this. Uh, you know, if you say to yourself, oh, I've only ever done one circuit Python project. They don't want to hear what I have to say. We do. We do want to hear what you have to say. Um, you know, a lot of the answers that will come in are from people who are more experienced and we very much want to keep in mind uh, people at all skill levels and all, you know, you have one project under your belt. You're just starting your first project because you got a, a gift of CircuitPython. We want to hear from everybody. So don't talk yourself out of it thinking that we don't want to hear from you because we do. Absolutely. It could be something as simple as your initial experience could have been better if this particular thing had gone more smoothly. That's something we want to know. Yeah. Um, so if, you know, even if you've only done one thing exactly, we still want to know um, what it is you'd like to see um, or what it is that we can do to help make your experience better. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, and with that, I think we're ready to wrap up the meeting. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for January 4th, 2021. Thank you to everyone who participated. We hope you'd like to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us who work at CircuitPython by purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast version will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. 
Our next meeting is, uh, I believe, next Monday. Um, what is that? Uh, January 11th. Uh, if you aren't on Discord yet, please visit adafru.it slash Discord to join. To participate in the meeting, ask one of us to add you to the Circuit Pythonista's role. We hope to see everyone again soon, and uh, once again, happy 2021. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for being here.